Jimmy Butler suffered a knee injury early in the play-in game versus 76ers and was clearly hobbled, although he was able to stay in for the rest of the game. But now that the Heat are going to have to play later on this week, what exactly could have happened here with his knee and how concerned should we be? Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal on the channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. So in this one, we're gonna be taking a look here at what happened earlier tonight with Jimmy Butler. Now, Butler stayed in the game and so he was able to finish, but clearly was hobbled, clearly was limping, especially as the game ended and he was walking off the court. He was certainly not the same player. And so I think there's concern here about the health of his knee going into the Heat's next game, whether that's gonna be against the Hawks or the Bulls. So let's take a look here at the play where this happened. Of course, he's going up for this layup and as the Philadelphia player comes down, and lands on him, we see a little bit of an awkward movement and sort of stress on Butler's right leg. So you kind of have to imagine and look in here where that right leg is going to be positioned. And as the 76ers player comes down, it looks to me like there's a little bit of potentially forced valgus stress or a little bit of kind of sudden hyperextension, almost similar to what we saw with Embiid when a player kind of landed on his knee and it went straight really quick and that's what sort of set everything off before we found out about the meniscus tear and the surgery. So here's Butler's coming down. Initially his knee and leg are relatively straight, but then as the Sixers player comes down here, he strikes the outside of his knee and looks like it wants to push it just ever so slight inward. What that's gonna do is this external force pushing valgus inward on the knee, potentially causing a little bit of stress to the MCL. And so the MCL is one structure in the knee that I'd be concerned about, just based on a player falling into your knee and a little bit of that external valgus load. There is a little bit of awkward twist here too, because we can see how Butler's foot is pointed this direction while his torso is pointed more forward. And so as he comes down, we see how that leg is internally rotated. That degree of internal or external rotation on the knee while you have an external force can also stress the ligaments, potentially the cartilage like the meniscus inside the knee as well. Looking at this view here, we see that same sort of thing. So the MCL is gonna be the ligament that runs on the inner portion of the knee from north to south. And so as Butler goes down to the ground, as the Sixers player falls into him, there's gonna be a little bit of external valgus directed load wanting to push his knee inward, which is gonna put some tension, some stress on that inner portion of the knee, potentially causing a sprain to that MCL. Then as he comes down, we do see a little bit more of that abrupt, just straightening of the knee, similar to what we saw with Embiid. I don't think I'm as concerned in this position just because there wasn't enough load. I don't think coming down, it looked like Ubre had already kind of landed off to the side as opposed to directly on the top of his knee. You also got to think too, remember about that tib fib joint like Steph Curry dealt with. We still see that amount of internal rotation there in Butler's lower leg. And so the tib fib joint is another thing that could potentially come to mind as just having some awkward twist and awkward trauma. But the two things I'd be concerned about, potentially MCL spraying that ligament on the inside of the knee from that forced external valgus directed load or potentially something inside the joint like irritation of that meniscus. If we go next here to our biodigital anatomy tool, I wanna to highlight an important part of that structure and function of the MCL. So the MCL actually has two different layers to it, to simplify things. There's a deep and a superficial layer. The deep layer of the MCL has a lot of connections to the rest of the knee joints. There's gonna be some connection through the capsule actually into that medial meniscus, and so pull injury stress on that MCL can also potentially cause some pull and irritation on that meniscus. That's unlike the LCL, which is the ligament on the outside of the knee that doesn't have any real relationship to that capsule or to that meniscus tissue. So if we zoom out a little bit here, of course, we're looking at a right knee. A valgus load is gonna be a load that comes in from the outside of the knee, pushing inward. As the knee comes a little bit inward, you're gonna put tension on the inner part of the knee, potentially causing a tear or a sprain of that MCL ligament. Now taking all this back to Butler, I know he was able to play, he was clearly still in pain. A mild sprain, like a grade one sprain of that ligament's not going to result in any instability in the knee. It's gonna cause pain, but it might not necessarily impair the function to the point where you can't play a game. The big key over the next 24 hours is going to be how much Butler's knee swells up. The MCL is classically thought of as an extra articular structure, meaning a sprain to just the MCL should not cause the entire joint to get swollen or what we call an effusion. However, if there's something like some bone trauma, some micro trauma in the bone bruising area, maybe a meniscus tear that got irritated, you would expect fluid inside the joint because those are intra-articular structures. So the response of Butler's knee in the next 24 hours is going to be key in terms of what else could be on the differential. If there's a significant amount of swelling, I'd be concerned about an injury inside the joint like to the cartilage or to the bone. If there's not a lot of swelling, that's more suggestive of an MCL sprain. And then it clearly comes down to just how functional you can be. 
We might see him come out there with a brace to try and provide some external support, but it really could be as simple as a pain management type of question for how effective Butler can be. I expect, unless he gets a lot of swelling in the joint, I expect he's probably still gonna try and go. It's more of a question of how effective he'll be if there is a repeat injury and then something that could linger into the rest of the playoffs if the Heat win. So that's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always questions or comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.